Here's a right isometric view of our exercise file, which is exercise six, and we're looking at it in wireframe mode. That's why we can look right through these objects. To render it in hidden line rendering, we go to view, rendering, hidden line. Now you'll notice that there are some objects in the scene that have lines missing. Those are the lines that represent the locations where these objects intersect with an object underneath, for example, right here and here. And those lines are missing because these objects are embedded into that extruded rectangle at the bottom. We can display those lines by going to View, Rendering, Line Render Options. This is our Line Render Options dialog box that opens. And you'll notice in the middle there is a series of checkboxes that provide us with a number of different options for what's going to be displayed and how. So the first one is Generate Intersecting Lines. And let's select that and click OK. And right away we'll see here now we can observe the intersecting lines, even though these objects really are embedded down into the extruded rectangle beneath. Let's look at some of the other options. The second one in the list is Display Surface Hatches. And here we have a surface hatch that's been applied to this extruded rectangle beneath. It's intended to represent bricks. And surface hatches are hatches that are linked with certain specific RenderWorks textures. We'll talk about RenderWorks textures later on in this book. But briefly, RenderWorks textures are images that are applied to objects so that when they are rendered in RenderWorks, the objects represent the material shown in the image that is in the texture. For in this case, it would be a f basically a photographic image of bricks. But when there are surface hatches that are associated with those textures, when we render the scene not in RenderWorks, but in Hidden Line Render, it's not the photographic image of the brick that shows up. Rather, it is the line-based hatch. And that is what we are seeing here. Let's take a look at the next option. We'll go back to View, Rendering, Line Render Options. And the next option is Display Text and Markers. What this allows us to do is to place regular text and markers in a scene and then have those text and markers show up in a hidden line rendering. But we need to make sure that this is selected in order for those items to actually appear in the rendering. So before we do this, let's go to a top plan view. And now we'll put a little bit of text into the scene. It's important when we do this, if we want it to show up in a hidden line rendering, that the active plane up here is set to layer plane and not screen plane, layer plane. That way, even though these are 2D objects, text and markers are 2D objects, they will show up in a 3D view. Let's quickly take a look at the front view of this. And you can see that it put this right at the ground plane. So we will move this just a little higher than the object itself. Let's nudge it down. Okay, so now that should be visible because it's sitting on top back to where we were. So let's render this in hidden line rendering. And you notice that it does not show up. And the reason it doesn't show up is because we have not selected that option yet. So let's go to View, Rendering, Line Render Options, click Display Text and Markers, because we want to see that text. And now that text shows up. Let's look at the next option in the list line render options, and we will sketch hidden line results. Now sketch, as we've seen, transforms the appearance of line drawings from a very smooth computer-generated appearance to a hand-drawn irregular look. So let's select a default sketch, let's say rough, so that we can actually see a pretty dramatic difference. And now we can see how sketch has been applied to the hidden line rendering. Let's take a look at one more feature that is available through the line render options dialog box and that is the smoothing angle. Here's a second exercise file for this chapter. Exercise 6b is the name of the file and we see here a chair that has a rounded shape that consists of many different facets and, and faces. And if we render this in hidden line rendering this, then we can see that uh, in the rendering itself, 
many, if not most, of those lines and facets are actually displayed. To help conceal them, or not display them, rather, what we can do is go back to View Rendering Line Render Options and alter the smoothing angle. So in this particular case, let's put in 20 degrees and click OK. It will re-render. And now you can see that most of these facets have disappeared. Every project and every object is different, so you may need to play a little bit with the setting to determine what's the best combination of visibility and concealment for many of these lines. Until now, we've been working in a design layer to look at our hidden line renderings, but we can do the same in a viewport and through the object info palette, get access to the same hidden line rendering controls that we've been using before. So here we are looking at a at a viewport of the scene that we were looking at before. You can see if we click on it, it'll say viewport. And if we go to the lower part of the object info palette, we will see two areas that provide us with access to rendering controls. The first one is background render. The second is foreground render. So let's go to the first one first, background render. And you see that the rendering method has been set to wireframe. That's the default. But if we click on the drop down button, we can now select hidden line. And we see the red striped line surrounding the viewport. This is telling us that the viewport needs to be updated. So we click on the update button in the object info palette. And now we can see that the viewport has been updated with a hidden line rendering settings. Now, if we want to change these hidden line rendering settings, we'll go back to the background render where it says hidden line. And right underneath that is a button that says background render settings. If we click on that, in this case, as we've selected hidden line as a rendering method, the correct dialog box opens up that gives us access to different controls that are appropriate to this rendering method. So in this case, let's also select display surface hatches and click OK and then update. Now we can also combine hidden line rendering with a different rendering method. So let's take a look at combining hidden line rendering with OpenGL. In this case, we'll go to background render where we've been all along here. And instead of hidden line, we'll select OpenGL. And now we go to the foreground render setting, click on the drop down button and select hidden line. This way we have OpenGL in the background and hidden line in the foreground. And then click the update button. And we can see how OpenGL has been combined with the hidden line rendering settings we decided on earlier.